Come for the practical and stay for the not so obvious. What's up guys, Frankie here. Thanks for tuning in as always. I'm on a mission to reach financial independence and retire early within the next 10 years. And early retirement starts with the basics, being smart and frugal with your money, especially on the big categories that matter most. You probably know most people, maybe including yourself, spend too much money on the five things I'm going to cover today, but I'm here to offer creative ideas or solutions to help you bring these common costs down or eliminate them completely. Because a dollar saved is a dollar earned, and a dollar earned and invested is lots of dollars probably put that on a shirt. Oh, and I'm having some fun trying something new with this video today. All graphics on screen I drew with this oddly fat stylus that I don't remember buying. Uh, maybe I should get that new Apple pencil. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you're not new to my channel, you know I'm all about helping people increase their savings rate one tip or one hack at a time. I think, in fact, three of the five tips I'm gonna cover here today were also covered in my latest book, Money You Can Hack It. So if you enjoy these tips today, you're gonna love the other 98 in this book. Link in the description down below as always, if you wanna check this one out. But let's get right to it. Here are the five things you need to stop buying if you want to retire early. Bitcoin, Pokemon cards, Birkin bags, a Hollywood personal trainer, and Mr. Beast burgers. So let's start with Bitcoin. Okay, totally kidding, of course. But now that I have your attention, I'm going to tackle a much less sexy list. But remember, it's the savings that's sexy. As always, if at any point during this video you find yourself liking it, hit that like button to let me know I'm doing something right. Subscribe if you're loving it and want some more of it. And tell me your favorite Pokemon character in the comments down below. Let's dive in and we're going to dive right into the deep end, starting with a big one. Stop buying too much house. A big mistake many people make is buying too much house, tying up a huge portion of their net worth and monthly cash flow. In fact, according to Investopedia, the average single family house has grown nearly three times in terms of square footage from 983 in 1950 to 2,623 in 2018. Spending beyond your needs or means can lead to becoming house poor, meaning you're paying too much for your house and don't have enough liquidity to pay for other bills or save sufficiently. Counting on a home as an investment is risky and you should always diversify and not rely on real estate as the bulk of your net worth because you can't retire on home equity. In an article called, Here's How Much Space We Waste in Our Big American Homes in One Chart, Market Watch highlighted how much house goes wasted. They wrote, a research team affiliated with UCLA studied American families and where they spend most of their time while inside their homes. The results were fascinating. And on screen, I'm going to show you that chart. That is a ton of space wasted. Looks like the dining room was hardly ever used, but hey, at least they played their piano from time to time. Unfortunately though, if you're a homeowner, you've already bought, so while you could sell and downgrade, I'm also a realist, so instead, let me quickly give tips to those renters out there for the moment, but some of these tips even work for you homeowners. First, always negotiate when your lease is up for renewal, or see if you can lock in a better rate by committing to a two-year lease. If you live alone and have an extra room, consider a roommate. You could even do this in some cases if you own and have a separate floor or unit with its own in out access. Look for a new place between November and February when you have the least amount of competition. And finally, and this is a pro tip, pro hack, search for photo list rentals on Craigslist. Sometimes you can actually score a great place with little to no competition just because the owner isn't tech savvy or hasn't taken the time yet to upload images. Next up, stop eating out. Let me get this out of the way. Stop going out to brunch. I have a few spending pet peeves of mine and this one peeves me. Breakfast is like the most inexpensive meal out there. Make some damn eggs, toast, bacon. All right, bacon's a little expensive, I'll admit. Make some French toast, some pancakes, anything but going out to brunch and ordering bottomless mimosas. Somebody that loves brunch, please defend this in the comments down below. I would love to know your rationale. Obviously, I'm going to say you need to cook more at home, but don't just cook each meal at home because that in and of itself can get expensive if you're following full recipes and don't have a fully stocked pantry. Be sure to seek out meals and portion sizes where you know you're going to have leftovers then use those leftovers for future lunches and even future dinners. Plan and prep and never go to the grocery store on an empty stomach or after 
you know, like needing some munchies, whatever. It's legal here, not my thing though. Another tip is to document what you make in some sort of organized fashion so that you have a handful of great ideas available to you that you can remake when planning your next grocery run. Do better than we did though. I mean, look at this mess. This is just, this is like half of it. I also recommend the app Kitchen Stories if you haven't used this one already. Specifically, I love the recipes in the app that call for just five ingredients. If nothing else, set a maximum limit on eating out. And this way though, you don't feel a huge amount of guilt the one or two times that you do go out each month as you literally estimate how much each bite is costing you. I don't do this, I swear. If I can resist this ridiculously good breakfast burrito spot that costs $7.50 half a block from my apartment, 30 out of 31 days at least in December, you can resist eating out as well. And those burritos are really good, you guys. Next up is streaming services. Do you remember the beginning of quarantine when you found yourself doing like a puzzle on a spring Sunday morning, reading a book for the first time in a month and replaying old board games that you already own? I feel like people already forget how much joy we found in the little things as we try to distract ourselves with so much unknown ahead. But then all of a sudden, a dozen new streaming services came out and took all your money because, hey, it was just a free trial, but you didn't cancel, did you? I get it. We have Netflix and Spotify and we've had them for years. And I totally think one or two subscription services is fine, but just pick one or two and call it a day. Alternatively, do the free trials of Pluto, Shudder, BritBox, Quibi, and CineStream, but set an alarm on your phone to cancel it. By the way, I only made one of those up and yes, RIP Quibi. Nice to not have known you. <laughs> now you might actually have access to more than you realize too. So don't forget about Prime Video as an obvious example. And Apple is practically giving away Apple TV Plus if you just like breathe in their direction. You get a full year for free with the purchase of a new device. And they actually just extended that a little bit further. And I learned that you can share this subscription with up to four family members. Of course you can get creative with logins in a totally <clears throat> legal way. So you and a friend could swap logins and add an extra profile. That's something I would say if I was being sarcastic, I don't do that. <clears throat> Beyond streaming though, consider all the subscriptions of course that you have. If you have an iPhone, by the way, a quick tip here. There's a super easy way to find your digital descriptions that you might have forgotten about. So simply click on settings, click on your name or iCloud profile, click subscriptions, and then click cancel on all of them. <laughs> By the way, if you love podcasts, check out this episode on screen of Stacking Benjamins if you wanna hear yours truly talk about subscriptions among other things, personal finance for an hour. I was crazy nervous, so this is an embarrassing recommendation. I think it was years ago by now, but it was a cool experience. Next up, lottery tickets. Never, and I mean never count on any form of the lottery as your financial problem solving ticket. The odds are greater that you're going to be hit by a meteorite than win the big one. And you're five times more likely to get hit by lightning twice. Now, I'm not a gambling man and maybe you enjoy the thrill of it, but if you do, just stick to the $1 or maximum $5 scratchers like once a month. Cause I'm gonna admit that I do like giving these as gifts I like getting them as gifts because of the entertainment value more than anything else. I like the crossword and bingo ones, super fun, but I go into it knowing that I'm buying this just for fun if I'm the one buying it. And I feel like I'm not being super firm on this tip because I'm also gonna give you a pro tip if you have a weakness for scratchers, which is that you should always get your tickets scanned, even the ones that you thought were losers. A few years back, actually, I had a small pile of these losers that I had kept throughout the year. One day I took them in and just had them all scanned and found $12 of winnings in those scratchers. Casinos have been shut down and life went on, right? Stay out of those, stop buying the big lottery tickets because you saw there was a huge pot on the news. Put that $20 instead towards your IRA. Deal? Moving on. <laughs> stop buying new cars if you wanna retire early. Maybe you've heard this before, but maybe not lately. The moment you drive a new car off the lot, it loses 10% of its value. After five years, cars lose roughly 60% of their value. Cars last 15 to 20 years, by the way, so let someone else take the hit on depreciation and buy used. You don't need a new car every three to five years. Stop doing that. And you know what? While we're talking three to five years, C is a little side tip here if you can rock the same phone for three to five years, but I digress. 
People in the fire community recommend if you must buy a car, buy used, aim for like the $5,000 range and pay for it in full in cash. If you buy from a dealer, never trade in your used car. It's always a ripoff. Sell private, keep some of that money in your pocket. If you own a car and don't use it often because of perhaps the virus, consider renting it out using the site Turo, especially if you have a newer car. At least get some of that 10% depreciation back if you're comfortable lending it out. And finally, if you have a partner that you live with and you have two cars between you, definitely consider selling one of the cars and sharing the other. That's what we do. I've shared here on the channel that instead of a car, I bought a used Vespa and intend to keep that for probably 10, 15, 20 years. And if you wanna know all about Vespas and the cost of ownership, I have a whole fun video that you can watch on the topic next. But if you do nothing else, please shop around for your gas. The convenient option is almost always the most expensive. Instead, you could try the Gas Buddy app. It's free and awesome. You can actually just search the word gas or gas prices in Google Maps. Yes, this can actually work. And if you have a Costco or a Sam's Club membership, hit the warehouse pumps. And to recap today's video, we had fun discussing five things that you need to stop buying, which is more house than you need, restaurant food and food to go, subscriptions, especially the streaming entertainment kind, lottery tickets, and new cars. As a bonus, I quickly mention a new phone every year or two, you don't need that. I'm actually on year three of my iPhone XS and super proud of that. My partner takes my old phone when I upgrade, so she's actually still on an iPhone 7, which is cooler than me. I just think phones have come along so far that the upgrade seems less worth it than they used to. I'm gonna start my goodbye by suggesting that you check out themoneyresolution.com to learn about my course and free preview of that course. You can also score a free digital copy of this book that I mentioned earlier, Money You Can Hack It, at that website, because if it's free, it's me. <laughs> I appreciate you guys as always for watching until the end. My name is Frankie. Please like if you like the video. Subscribe if you loved it and wanna see more from me in your feed. This year I am committed to putting out two videos a week and so far so good. Have an awesome week everyone or weekend ahead and I'll see you all next week on the next one. Thanks. Oh, and I still really wanna know your favorite Pokemon. Full disclosure though, I know nothing about Pokemon but I'm going to reply to you with at least one fire emoji. Charizard and Pikachu. That's all that comes to mind. Oh, I did try that one Pokemon Go game a few years back when it was all the rage. I might go give that another shot. See you guys.